Hi everyone, I'm Jo from Country Cow Designs and in today's video I'm going to show you my new handbag, the Lomexa and I'm just going to take you through the tutorial on how to make your own. So as with all my tutorials, um, if you want to actually make the bag with me you will need to buy the pattern and the link will be in the description. It's available on my website countrycowdesigns.com but if you just want to check out how it's made and whether you think it's something that you want to do then you can just watch the tutorial for free um, and then decide afterwards if you want to commit to getting the pattern. So this is my first um, handbag and it's a nice slouchy one. It's made using Decaville Light for the main stabiliser. So I know some people can't get hold of Decaville Light or it's particularly expensive outside of Europe. So if you're worried about that, you can make this with foam instead and it will just give it a firmer feel. It won't be so slouchy. So this is the standard pattern because as always I've got a few options for you but this is if you just follow the standard pattern. So it's got the Decaville light and it's got these exterior pockets. So on both sides it's got one of these. Um, and as usual with my slanted zip I have made it so that the zip is at the top when it's closed. I prefer that but I know some people prefer to do it on the left so if you want to change it up that's not a problem. Now it's got these um, handles that fold down from the O-rings and on the top it has got a zip closure. So I'll just show you that when it's closed. So hopefully you can see it just pulls it nice and tightly closed and what it does gives it a nice triangular shape on the sides. And you'll also notice on these sides that we've got these D-ring connectors for a crossbody strap. So I'll also take you through making the crossbody strap. Obviously that's optional. If you don't want a crossbody strap, that's absolutely fine. But it's great, you know, if you just want to have your hands free when you're using your bag and not sort of worry about it being on your shoulder all the time. Now on the inside, we've got, an in we've got four slip pockets here. We've also got an interior zip pocket on this side. And hopefully you can just about see that we've got loads of card slots in there. So you can carry it around instead of your wallet if you want to. And as always, I've tried to make the lining nice tight fit. So there's an op optional section at the end to sew the bottom in if you want to, um, but that's totally optional. Some people prefer not to, so um, you can just decide when we come to that part. Now on the base, you'll notice that there's no seam. So one thing about this pattern is that you're not going to you're not going to want to use a directional fabric for the exterior because it would end up upside down on one side. So I know some people really want to use directional fabric, so I have put an option at the end of the written pattern for creating it slightly differently if you really want to use a directional print. I've also made this pattern um, to be used for cork, vinyl, leather, something, something durable for the main exterior. But if you want to change that for cotton or canvas, just follow the extra little steps again in the option section of the pattern. You'll need to add some reinforcement to these strap connectors um, and you'll need to use foam because it just won't, won't stand up with Decaville light. And for these side panels, I recommend something like cotton or canvas just because then you can get a nice sort of feature fabric going on. But of course you could do it all in one fabric if you wanted to. So I'm going to show you another one that I did. Now this one you can see has no exterior pockets and it also has no handles. So it's just got the crossbody strap. So it's a much sort of simpler looking bag. I really like the look of this one too. So the options are there in the pattern to make it without pockets. Um, and obviously you can just skip the handles if you want to. Um, it's totally up to you. You can just personalize it to make it your own. But if this is your first time making it, then I'd recommend that you probably just stick to the pattern for the first time. Um, and then once you're feeling a bit more adventurous, you can start making changes. Um, there's the instructions in there, but they're not step-by-step um, -step photo instructions. They're just written instructions for the changes. So you're gonna to want to feel a little bit confident before you dive right in. Now there's loads of options 
for hardware on this. If you want to have the crossbody strap, that obviously is going to require some hardware. Um, you can put bag feet on too if you want to. The one thing that I would say is absolutely essential is these O-rings because it just doesn't look the same without them. So this is the main feature um, and obviously it holds the handles if you're doing the handles. I'd also strongly recommend using rivets. I think they look amazing. Um, they just they just really add something to it. So I've got a little short tutorial on my YouTube of using a rivet press um, compared to using hand tools. So if you want to, you can check that out if it's your first time using rivets. Um, they're not as bad as you think. Probably the hardest part is just getting the right tools. And then once you get going, it's quite simple. So hopefully I've covered everything. I'm gonna do a bit of a longer introduction on this video than I normally do. I'm gonna discuss all the pattern pieces before we start. Um, hopefully that's helpful to you, but you can just skip ahead if you don't want to know about that. Um, I'll leave timestamps in the video description. So if you want to skip to a specific point that you're struggling with, just go ahead and skip. And yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. If you've got any questions, just leave me a comment. Okay, we're going to start by looking at the hardware that we need. So the really essential part is these four O-rings, which are one and a half inches. So I get mine from Emmeline Bags. Um, I know that these aren't always easy to find. So what I've done is I've um, arranged for suppliers in the UK, the USA and Australia who are all going to do um, kits for my bag. So if you're struggling to find all the parts that you need for this bag, just have a look in the video description and you'll be able to see where other kits are. Um, otherwise, you can buy these O-rings from Emmeline Bags, um, Size Swag in the USA, online bag supplies and I think Dreamy Hardware are going to do them soon in Australia. So that's quite a few. So we've got those O-rings. Next, if you want the crossbody strap, you're going to need two swivel clasps. You're going to need two one inch D-rings. They're all one inch and a one inch slider. I'm also choosing to have a one inch strap end on the visible end of that strap. I just think it gives it a really nice finish because I'm using cork and I don't want it to get too bulky on the ends. So that's everything for your crossbody strap. For your handles, you can also use four three quarter inch strap ends. So again, I love the effect these give. Um, they just give it a really professional finish. They're available from lots of different places, all the places I've already mentioned. So I'm going to use those on my handles. Next, we've got the bag feet, which most people are probably going to want to use. And you should have your washers and your bag feet for that. I'm using 14 millimeter ones in this um, bag, but you can use 18 millimeter or three quarter inch. That's fine. And lastly, I've got my zips. So I've got my interior zip. And then I've got two exterior zips for pockets and I've got another exterior zip for the top. So I just wanted to take a minute to show you how I use zipper tape. So I know some people struggle putting the heads on. Um, I think if you buy more expensive zips, they're much easier to put on. So first of all, I just slip it on to one side a little bit. Bring the other side on to match. So it's looking like that. And then you just put your fingers down on here and it will slide straight on. So once you get used to it, it's quite easy to do. Another thing I do is I just melt the edges with a lighter. My lighter's running out. Yep, yeah, definitely running out. Um, so when you melt it with the edges, it just stops it fraying. The other option is to just use some fray check on there, but I do that to all my zipper tape. So you're going to want three exterior zippers in total and I almost forgot we're going to need some rivets as well. So you're going to need about 25 medium sized eight millimeter post rivets. So moving on to fabrics, I'm going to be using this spoon flower fabric for my feature fabric. So that's just for the sides and the top. I've already fused my interfacing and I've fused Decaville to the centre. Make sure it's nice and centred so it's not going to be in your seam allowance. So I've done both of those. For the rest of my exterior, I'm using this tobacco coloured cork. So I've cut everything out that I need and 
that's not got anything on it yet because we won't fuse the Decaville until later. So there's my Decaville light ready for later. There are my top pieces. And these are my, my crossbody strap tabs. So I've already fused the Decaville again to the center of those two. You should also have your base. So I'm just using Peltex 71F. Anything that's like a, an ultra firm um, stabilizer is fine. There's a list on page 56 of the pattern, I think it is, which will show you all the alternatives if you don't have the specific stabilizers that I'm using. So for my lining, I have got this gorgeous fabric from Essie Inc. I got my two main lining panels. These four pieces are my zip pockets. So just make sure that you've got two cut out normal and two cut out reversed. So that's where you cut it out with the pattern piece and you flip over the pattern piece and cut it again. So I've got two of each. Then I've got my zip tail, all my pocket pieces, uh, my pocket facing, my card slots, and here's my exterior main panel. So when you're cutting this one out and the other exterior pieces, I'll just show you um, that these actually fit together. So if you're cutting them out all at once, just you can cut a huge rectangle if you do it right and the other piece will fit on the other end. So it, I just find that's easier to make sure I've not got any waste. I cut them out at the same time. Uh, okay, and lastly, before we start, I'm going to be using a few tools today. I'm going to be using double-sided tape, which um, I bought from Amazon. That's um, something new that I'm trying. I finally, finally found this tape that doesn't cause problems with my needle, so I'm using that. Uh, I've also got this hole punch for making the holes for my rivets. I just got this from the local DIY shop, um, but I think you can get them also online in places like Amazon. And lastly, I'm gonna be using my rivet press. So that's gonna to be to set my rivets. And if you want a demonstration of how these two tools are used, you can just watch my short rivet and grommet video where I'll explain how I use those. I'm also gonna be using my friction erasable pen so this you can just write on the fabric draw on the fabric and it will just erase with some heat so you should have two handles the first thing that we're going to do is draw a line right down the center of each handle So you're going to want to use some double-sided tape or glue if you're doing your handles from cork or vinyl or leather or something like that because you don't really want to be pressing this with heat. So I'm going to use double-sided tape and I'm just going to the edge of that center line. Now, if you're using tape like me, just make sure it's the stuff that is needle friendly. Um, that's why I've always used glue in the past, but this stuff seems to work great. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna fold this into that center line. Now peel off this side and you just want to fold it in to match, just to meet the other side. Okay, once you've got that done, you're going to fold it again on that centre line. And now I'm just going to use my Wonder Clips to hold it in place and just clip it along the whole length of that strap. So 
So now that's clipped, what we're going to do is we're going to top stitch along all four edges and then we're going to sew an extra couple of lines of stitching through this handle and we're going to do this exactly the same for both handles. So I will just clip the other one together now and then go over to the sewing machine and we can sew through both. So I should have mentioned that I'm using a domestic sewing machine in this tutorial. So this is my Benina 930 record. It's not available to purchase nowadays because it's quite an old machine from the 70s, but it is a good domestic sewing machine and I'm quite a keen bag maker on domestic sewing machines. I don't, I don't think you need an industrial. I'd love to have one, but I don't have um, the room or the budget for one right now. So I think it's definitely possible to make good bags on a domestic machine. This, this is the only machine that I use. Um, so when I'm doing the strap, I'm going to be increasing my top's tension and I put it up to the max when I'm doing something like this. I use a Microtex size 90 needle and I put my machine on the longest stitch length, which is a four millimeter. That just makes sure that I get nice top stitching. And when I'm sewing through this many layers, I find that my top tension has to be high or else I end up um, with loops on the underneath of the strap. So once I've done my eighth of an inch seam allowance around all four edges, I'm just gonna run a couple of extra rows of stitching down the strap. So I'm gonna do those at about a quarter inch seam allowance each. Um, and that will just make sure that the handle is really strong. And also it just kind of looks nice. So there's both of my finished handles. So you can see that my stitch is nice and even. Whereas um, before when I was using double sided tape, I used to end up with skip stitches all over the place and different length stitches. And that was just because the tape I was using wasn't agreeing with my needle. Um, so just watch out for that. But this new stuff I'm using is just great. So if you're having strap ends like me, now's the time to fit them. What you wanna do is figure out which side of the strap you want on top. So normally it's the one that you've had on top when you're sewing, because it just has like a very slightly neater finish. And you just push those on and then grab your tiny little screws. And try not to lose any. OK, so you just want to screw them in through this tiny little hole. And I strongly recommend having a magnetic screwdriver so you don't lose the screws. When you're fitting these strap ends, just remember to um, put them the same way around on both sides because this section with the um, hatching and the screws, that's for the back side. And you don't want to have like one with the back showing and one with the front showing when your handles are attached to your bag. So just be careful that they're both on the same side. So for instance, with this one, if I just put them both on there. Once they're on the bag, they'll be showing like that. So you need to make sure that they're matching before you do it. Also, another thing that makes it slightly easier to install these, if you've got the magnetic screwdriver, is to just put the screw on the end and then put this against a flat surface and screw it in like that. Just be careful when you're turning it that you're not destroying the thread on the screw because they're tiny little screws. And if you're not putting enough pressure on, then they can just twist rather than going into the strap. So for the strap connectors, you should have one long piece. Um, but for me, I am using up the scraps of my cork. So I've already cut mine down into little pieces because later on, that's what we'll do. This makes constructing them a lot harder. So I definitely recommend doing it the way the pattern is, unless like me, you really need to use up your cork sc scraps, in which case, if you jump ahead to page seven, it will tell you how long each connector is gonna be once it's finished. Um, so what you're gonna do on your piece is just put some double-sided tape or something similar on both sides. So I've already drawn a line down the center, same as we did with the handles. 
Now, because I've already cut mine into smaller pieces, um, I'm gonna have to do this on every single one. Whereas if you've got one piece, you can just do the one piece at, at once and then you're done. So fold this in, same as we did with the handles. You're gonna fold it into that center line that you marked. And then fold the other side in to match it. Now what we're going to do is top stitch this with a quarter inch seam allowance in from each long edge. And again, if you've got the single piece, you're just going to top stitch it all at once. And then later on, we'll trim it down. Okay, so what you should have is one really long piece that just looks like this and is top stitched um, a quarter of an inch in on each side. And you're gonna cut those down later. Next, we're gonna do the crossbody strap. So I've made this 55 inches because it's quite a good size and it's the width of most cork and vinyl rolls. So you won't have a problem cutting it out. But if like me, you're, you're using scraps and you don't have a piece that's 55 inches long, then you can use two pieces. I don't generally like to join cork and vinyl because it makes it really bulky to get over the um, slider. But in this occasion, I don't have uh, much of a choice and so I'm gonna make it work. So I'm just gonna put these right sides together and clip this short edge. And what I'm gonna do is sew across this with about half an inch seam allowance. I'm then going to press the seam open and stitch the seams down on each side to try and pull the bulk in and reduce the bulk. So now my crossbody strap has been joined. I'm going to do exactly the same thing as I did with both of the handles. I'm going to draw a line down the center, fold the two long edges into that line and stick them. And then I'm going to fold it again so it's four layers thick. Once I've done that, I'm just going to top stitch it. So I'm not gonna show you this again because it's exactly the same as um, what I did with the handles, um, but I'm gonna do a slightly different top stitch, so I will show you that. So that's my finished crossbody strap. Now normally I would spend a bit of time making the ends just a little bit neater but because I know I'm using strap ends I'm just not worried about that so I'm leaving those as they are. Um, but you are going to notice maybe in the video that there is quite a bit of bulk where I've got my join. Now that's why I normally don't like to have a join because later on it's going to make it hard to get my slider through. So I'm gonna to have to get hold of um, an extra wide slider at some point, but for the purpose of the video, I'll show you um, how to do the rest of the strap and then I'll just change it at a later date. So what you wanna do is just put one end through. So if you've got an, a neater end and you're not having the strap ends, then take, take the messy end if there is one. And you just wanna put that through and around this center bar. So the center bar is in the middle and you want to fold it back by about an inch and a half, maybe two inches, anything like that. And now I'm just going to set some rivets. So I've got a little rivet setting tool that I'm just going to use. So it's this little rivet template and it's 
just really good for making sure that I get my straps nice and central. So first of all, put a clip, couple of clips on and you want to mark for two rivets. So I'm just going to mark two on here. And then grab your hole punch and punch through your marks. Now you'll need a couple of rivets. So you simply push those rivets through and then you put the caps on the other end. And if like me, you've got a press, then you just need to pop that in. Make sure it's central. And that should be both of them done. So the next thing to do is to grab one of your swivel clasps. And you want to put the free end through a clasp. And then you're going to bring it back through here. And you can start to see now why the really wide, the extra wide um, sliders are really good. Because with cork and vinyl, it just starts getting really bulky. Now I'm going to put my other clasp over here. I'm going to fold this back and rivet that into place as well. And that will be the finished crossbody strap. Now, if you're having a strap end, you need to install this before you rivet. Otherwise, you might not be able to get it on. And I just make sure that the front of this strap end is pointing out like that. Now, the reason I don't put one on the other end is because it's going to be permanently hidden like that. And if I put a strap on, end on there, it's just going to make it bulky unnecessarily and no one is ever going to see that. So it seems like a total waste as well. So I'm just going to screw this on and then I'm going to rivet it into place. So that's what it should look like once it's all done. So you can see that the bulk of my join just is not going to work with this size slider. So I'm going to have to change that later. I'm going to have fun taking those rivets out but I just wanted to show you how to make the full crossbody strap. So set that aside. And now we're going to move on to the crossbody tabs. Okay, so for the strap connectors, you're going to have your two strap connectors with Decaville light fused to the center. This Decaville light is just going to make it um, stronger and make it keep its shape in the long term. So I just prefer to do it this way. So I fused it to the center. Mine's actually a little bit wider than it should be, but it, I've checked and it still fits my D-rings, so I'm not too worried. So you just want to press those sides in toward the centre. So yours will probably actually meet in the centre, but that's fine. And then what you're going to do is just mark it two inches up from one end. So this is actually the middle. And then you need to put a D-ring on. And grab a bit of double-sided tape to put on each end. Okay, so fold that back with the double-sided tape and fold it to meet those marks. So this might be a little bit easier if you've actually pressed it with an iron because it will keep its shape a little bit better. 
There we go. Okay, so you just want them to meet on that two inch mark that you made. And that's your strap connector. So now I'm just gonna set that aside. I'm gonna do the same with, same with the other one. Um, and then we'll move on to step two. One thing I did mean to say is that if you're using um, cork, vinyl or leather for these, then just don't bother with the Decaville. You just don't need it. This is only if you're using something like cotton or canvas, just to give it like some real stability um, and make sure that it keeps its shape in the long term. Once both of those um, crossbody tabs are done, get a little bit of double-sided tape and just pop it on the back because we'll need to stick them onto the side panels later. And in the meantime, this will just keep them held together until we're ready to use them. Okay, so step two is the exterior preparation. So you're gonna need your two exterior top pieces, which um, should be reversed. So you can see that they are opposite sides to each other. You're also gonna need your four O-rings and then you should have your strap connector, which needs to be cut down into six pieces, which is detailed on page seven of the pattern. So for this step, you're gonna want an erasable fabric pen. Now, if this is your first time you're using um, the pen that you're using and the fabric that you're using, then make sure you test it before you start because the last thing you want is for these lines to be showing later on. So first of all, you need to mark it down from the top. So we're just marking it one and a half inches down from this straight edge. Now, you also want to be careful with these pens that you don't um, sort of score the fabric um, if you're using cork or vinyl, because then when you remove it with the heat, you end up with like a white line. So just be really careful that you don't do that. And then we're going to measure it two and three quarter inches in from the edge. So you want to measure that in from both sides. So where this line is that you've drawn, you just want to mark it down like that. Hopefully you can see that. And then you want to do the same thing on this side. So two and three quarter inches again, and you just want to mark it underneath the line. So hopefully that's what you've got. Now grab your first connector. So we're going to start with one of the short ones. And what we're going to do is we're going to mark it one and a half inches in from one end. Make sure you're doing this on the wrong side, so this side with the fold. Now, if you're unsure about any of the measurements, just follow the pattern. They're all written in there in the diagrams as well as in the writing. Okay, so you've got your mark one and a half inches in from this end. You're going to put double sided tape on the other end. Take that tape off. and place the ring on it. And what you want to do now is fold this back to meet your one and a half inch mark. So that's what you're going to have. And this gap just here up to this mark is one and a half inches. Now get a little bit more double sided tape and you're going to apply it like this onto the strap. Again, this is on the wrong side. So just peel that off. I always have trouble with double-sided tape. There we go, okay. Now what we're gonna do is we'll start from the left-hand side. We're going to place this, so if like mine just come undone, just make sure again that it's on the mark. Now this fold here is going to go on the mark that we made just here. So you want to make sure it's right on top of that mark and then line up the top with the top line here. Okay, 
Okay, so just make sure that it's nice and straight, that the underneath the folded part isn't sort of sticking up anywhere. Make sure that you're really happy with that. Um, and we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side before we sew this on. So grab another short piece, mark it one and a half inches in. Oh, that's the right side. You need to make sure you're marking it on the wrong side. And then you're going to put some double-sided tape on the other end. Okay, having a hard time with my tape, but put another ring on there and fold this back again to your marks. There we go. And then I'm going to put another bit on the back. And you're going to do the same thing as before. You're going to make sure that this fold here is on the mark and that it's lined up all along with this top line. So the line is above it. Okay, and both of them should be hanging off the edge just a little bit. So what you're going to do now is you're going to mark one inch from the fold. So make sure that's nicely folded and you're going to mark it one inch. Do the same on this one. Okay, now we're going to take it to the sewing machine and we're going to sew with an eighth of an inch seam allowance along here. Then we're going to go across this line and back down. And you're going to do the same thing on both of these. So we're leaving this little area here free because we're going to use a rivet. So if you don't want to use rivets, then instead, you're going to have to come closer right up to the ring and across, which you might find easier with either a zipper foot or just using a hump jumper to keep your foot level, um, whichever you prefer. But I really suggest trying to use the rivets if you're up for it, because I just think it really adds to the look and it looks really nice on this bag. Okay, so those are nicely sewn into place. Now we want to set the rivets. So you can leave this until you're doing them all at once if you want to, but I like to do these now just to fix them into place. And what you're gonna do is measure half an inch from that fold and you're gonna mark it there. Just to make sure it's nice and central on the strap. Now I'll grab your rivet um, hole setter. So this is the tool that I'm using for this. And you just wanna punch right through that hole. Just make sure as you're doing it that it's still straight there. And then grab a couple of rivets and put those, put them through there. And then I'm just going to set them using my press. So I always make sure that that's sat nice and snug in the bottom piece. I'm going to bring the top down 
make sure it's all nice and central and give it a good press. Okay, now you're gonna need your longer piece of strap connector and on the wrong side, you want to measure and mark three inches in from each end. And then we're gonna put some double-sided tape on both short ends. I'm having so much trouble with this double-sided tape that I've, I've just taken it off already um, off camera so you don't have to watch me struggle. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this through one of these rings and bring the end back and make it meet one of those marks. Stick that in place. And then you're gonna put this end through as well and bring it back to meet the second mark. So hopefully you can see my mark there. There we go. Okay, so just make sure that you've not got a situation like this where it's sticking up. Make sure that it's sat nice and tight and taut, that it's not like pulling your rings in like this, but it's also not too loose. It should match your marks perfectly and that should be the perfect size, but you just wanna make sure before you go any further. And also if you're having trouble with your tape like I am, just make sure that's stuck nicely. Okay. I'm also just gonna put a little bit more on the back of the strap to hold it in place. There we go. So make sure it's lined up again with this top line. And as you did before, you're gonna mark one inch away from the folds. Now what we're going to do is we're going to sew an eighth of an inch from the edge up, an eighth of an inch along here and back down. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my threads really long and I'm going to pull them through the back and tie them off rather than back stitching because it's hard to hide your back stitching here. Whereas over here, I could just hide it in the seam allowance. Um, so you'll notice that I don't do back stitching when I'm doing this bit. So to hide your threads at the back, all you need to do is just turn it over and you pull your threads gently on the back. So one of mine has come through on its own, which does happen to me quite a bit. But what I do is I just give it a little tug and hopefully you can see that that thread has now created like a little hoop. So I'm just gonna give that a little pull and what should happen yeah, is that this thread then comes through. And once I've got them all at the back, I'm just gonna tie them together and make sure it's nice and tight. I'm gonna do a triple knot and then that should hold those in place. So we just need to fit the rivets on this side. And again, I'm gonna mark it half an inch from the fold. So just make sure that your fold is nice and flat.
There you go, so that's what you should now have. And you're gonna to want to take it over to an iron or something and just remove these lines. So I'm just gonna put mine on a low heat because I'm using cork and just make sure that I get rid of all my pen marks um, that I've used. Okay, so that's what both of your top pieces should look like once you're done. Um, if you are doing the version without any pockets, you're gonna do the exact same thing, but you're just gonna do it at the top um, of your main panel instead. So set those aside and we'll move on to the exterior pockets. So first thing you need to do is attach your base. So make sure it's nicely centered um, by using a line and make sure it's half an inch in from each edge. So that's my base stabilizer. I've fused that on using the iron. Um, I would recommend that you check whether the fabric you're using can take heat before you fuse something like this on. So I'm using cork and in the past I've had real trouble with cork um, because it's sort of wrinkled and damaged it when I've used an iron. So just check it on a scrap piece before you start and if necessary you can use glue instead. Now use the measurements in the pattern to mark where your bag feet are going to go and then what you want to do is grab the washers from your bag feet and place them over each mark and mark the side slits ready for fitting. So you can see that I've already done this for all four of my bag feet. So next I'm going to make holes where these slits are using a seam ripper and I'm making sure that I go all the way through the stabilizer at the back. So just be really careful if you're using a seam ripper because you don't want to slip and make it bigger than it needs to be. Once you've made those slits, grab a bag foot and just poke the prongs right through. And on the other side, you want to put that washer over the prongs. And just fold those out. So we're gonna put some Decaville light on this later, so don't worry about needing to protect the fabric. Just do the same thing with all four bag feet until they're all fitted. Now, now the bag feet are fitted, if you're not having the exterior pockets, then you can just go ahead and jump straight to the end where you fuse your Decaville to this panel. So for the pockets, you're gonna have your main exterior piece, two zips and four pocket pieces, as well as your two top exteriors. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna start with one of these slanted edges. Now, it's really important that you mark the centers on all of these slanted edges. So on all of your pockets and everything. And to find the center on these, I actually just measure it. And then I mark because um, if you fold it straight in half, you're going to get the center down here, but it's not necessarily going to be the center of this one. And I want to make sure that they all match up. So I've marked the centers on everything, including my zips. Now you need to find which way your zip closes. So mine's going that way. And I like to have my zips closing at the highest point. Normally you would have them closing on the left, but for me, if it's a pocket that's going up, then I want it to close at the highest point. So what I'm gonna do is just put this right sides together and I'm gonna match up my center marks. And I'm just gonna clip that into place. And now I'm gonna baste through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. When I get to my zip, I just leave my needle in and I lift up my presser foot and just wiggle the zip out of the way. A lot of people like to sew across the ends of their zips to make sure that the zip head doesn't come off. Um, but I don't bother doing this just because I've never had a zip head come off. So um, I don't worry too much about that. So I'm just gonna base that into place and then we'll start with the first pocket piece. Now 
that space is in place, grab um, a pocket piece. So you're going to have them going opposite ways because you've got two cut out reversed. So to find the right one, match up the slanted edge of the pocket piece with this slanted edge. And that one is not right because it hasn't got a straight bottom. So I'll show you what I mean. This one now, if I match it up with a slanted edge, is completely straight across the bottom. So this is the pocket piece that you need. You've got two of each, so you've got a 50-50 chance of getting it right. And you just want to match up your center marks and clip that into place. Now we're going to sew through this with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So for me, I don't like to use zip foot because I just can't get a nice straight line. So I'm using my normal presser foot and I move my needle as far as I can over toward the zip. And then my foot sort of pushes up against the zip and that gives me a nice straight line and a nice neat finish. So you'll see what I mean when I start sewing. And again, I'm gonna to have to move the zipper halfway through. Um, so you'll see me just leave my needle in and lift my presser foot up to wiggle that out of the way. So there it is all stitched into place. Now I'm going to push this up, this pocket piece, I'm going to push it away from the zip. You might prefer to use an iron when you're doing this. It might give a neat finish, just depends on the fabrics you're using and, and how you feel about it. I'm going to push this away as well from the zip. And I'm just going to put a few clips down the side to try and hold it all together. Okay, so I'm going to top stitch through here, through all the seams, with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now you need to find the top piece that matches, so just make sure that you've got the one that will complete it. And match up the centre marks again with the zip and just clip that into place. That's right sides together. Now that's clipped, we're going to baste this together with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. sewn into place you need to find the next pocket piece so just turn that over and again we want the pocket piece to be straight at the bottom so just match up the slanted edge and that one is the one we want because we've got a nice straight edge at the bottom don't worry about the fact that the pocket is a little bit long um, I could have made it so that the pocket pieces matched but it would have meant so you'd have a choice of four pockets and it just would have ended up being a lot more complicated. Anyone who's made my Vordenza pattern will know that yeah, having the pocket pieces so they actually match just makes it a little bit more complicated. So for this one, I just thought we could just trim this when we're done. So now I'm going to sew this again with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance um, along the zip and then we will press it out and top stitch again. now also into place so this time we're not going to push the pocket piece up we're just going to push the exterior so I'll just turn it over and basically what you want to do is push it away from the zip 
but you want the seams to be behind it because when we top stitch, we want to top stitch through the seams as well. So just push that up. Again, you could use an iron if you really want to. It might be easier. And now I'm going to top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So you can see that one was starting to get a little bit more tricky, mostly because we've got all of this going on. So what I'll do for the next one is like roll it all up out of the way when I'm stitching so so that it's just easier to fit through my machine. Don't worry about bending your base because things like Peltex and that sort of thing, they should just re retain their shape later on, um, especially if you give it a good press, it should go flat again. So we'll start next on the other side and the first thing I'm going to do is figure out which way my zip closes. So I want it to close at the top and I'm going to match my centers, clip these together and I'm going to baste that with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So that's basted in place but before we go any further because it's starting to get a bit cumbersome I'm going to roll this up. So I'll just make sure that my zip's nowhere near the edge. And this is the side that we've finished with so I'm just going to Roll that up like that. And I've got these jumbo wonder clips, I think they're called. I'm just gonna clip that into place. On both sides, I'll just use a couple. So you don't have to do this, but you might just find it easier to get it through the machine because otherwise you've just got so much bulk going on. So the next pocket piece that I'm gonna attach Again, I need to match up the slants. That's not the right one because it's gonna end up very wonky. So I'll match up the slanted edge with the zip and that's got a straight edge. So that's the one I want. So I'll just match that up and clip it into place. And I'm gonna sew this with a quarter inch seam allowance through all of here. And again, I'm just gonna to have to move my zip out of the way when I get to it. But hopefully, because I've sort of rolled this up, I can now just fit it through my machine nice and easy. Um, again, that's totally optional. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. So there it is sewn into place. Um, I'm not showing you the sewing part because we're doing the exact same thing as we did with the first pocket. And I figure that most of you aren't going to want to watch me do the same thing twice. So again, I'm just going to push this up. And push everything away from the zip. And the same as before, I'm going to top stitch this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so we're getting close now. You just need to grab the remaining top piece and you're going to clip that right sides together with the zip, match up those center marks again. And I'm going to sew through this, um, baste it with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. That's it, baste it into place. Look at that wonky bit of stitching. That's what happens when you're not paying attention and it gets caught on your machine. So what you want to do next is you want to flip that over and grab your last pocket piece and you want to clip that right sides together with your other pocket piece and it should again be straight at the bottom. If it's not then that's a bit concerning because you should have um, only four pieces and this is the last one. So I'm just going to clip this together and then I'm going to sew it again with a quarter inch seam allowance. All right, we're almost there with these pockets. So that's all sewn into place. And now you just want to push this up. So remember, you want the seams to be behind where you're top stitching. So push this up away from the zip. The same as you did on the other pocket. And 
and then we're going to top stitch through this with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and we're going to be sewing through the seams behind at the same time so there you go that's in my opinion the most difficult part over and done with so i'm going to get rid of my clips and now we just need to seal up the bottom of the pockets so turn that over and you'll see now if you're anything like me that your um that your cotton pockets have sort of stretched over the edge a little bit it always stretches when i sew it i'm not worried about it at all um so what we need to do first of all is trim this bottom piece to match so make sure it's all lying nice and flat and i'm just gonna mark where it is and then i'm just gonna pull this away from everything else And I'm simply going to cut that off. Okay, so now it matches at the bottom. And I'm just going to put a few clips on the sides and on the bottom. And what we want to do is sew the bottom closed, just the bottom, don't worry about the sides because they'll get done later. And I'm going to use a quarter inch seam allowance, but before I do that, I'm just going to trim the other pocket too, because I might as well sew them both at the same time. Now you'll notice up here that I missed my seam a little bit. It's really not a problem. I don't think it's going to cause any issue, especially as it's on the edge. So that sort of thing, I don't really worry about. Um, I think there's certain things that make a big difference in bag making and that is not one of them. When you're trimming your pockets down, just make sure that you're away from your bag because you do not want to accidentally cut through your bag. When you're clipping this together, make sure it's not clipped to the main exterior. Okay, so I'm going to sew both of these pockets closed. I'm going to pull them away and sew through them like this to make sure I don't go through the exterior by accident. Now that the bottom of the pockets are closed, you're going to sew them down the sides. So you're just going to base them into place so that they don't move. So just put a few clips on. If your pocket's like a little bit off like mine, it just it isn't that big of a deal because when you're sewing later, it'll just get lost in the seam allowance. So just make sure that your pockets are lying like nice and flat, like this. You know? And what we're going to do is we're going to baste down the sides, just sew both of the pockets into place on both sides. And then the last step in this section is going to be to apply the Decaville light.
so that's my pockets all um, basted into place. If you need to use a quarter inch seam allowance to catch your pockets, that's absolutely fine because later on we're going to use a three eighths of an inch seam allowance, so you've got a bit of room for um, error. So the next thing that we need to do is attach the Decaville light. Now, if you're using foam, yours is going to be slightly bigger because you're going to need to baste it into place. So that's fine. You can just go ahead and do that now. But if, like me, you're using Decaville light to give it like a slight, uh, slightly slouchy finish, then you're going to need it to be half an inch in. So it's not in the seam allowances. So what I do to make sure that it's half an inch in is I just sort of mark it all the way around. So I've got like a guideline. Now you don't need to do the whole thing, but just a bit on each side means that you can get it nice and central. Now, if this is your first time fusing um, something with heat to cork or vinyl, then make sure that you check on a scrap piece first that it can handle it, because the last thing you want is to just stick your iron down on like some cork or vinyl and completely ruin it. It would be um, pretty heartbreaking. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match it up with these lines and make sure that it's half an inch in on each side. And I'm gonna fuse it into place. Now, I'm not gonna lie, this is a little bit awkward because you've got all this hardware like underneath all the bulkiness and you've got zips as well um, all over the place. So just take your time, work around it with the iron, fuse it all into place. Um, just, just take your time, really. It's perfectly doable. It just needs a little bit of working around to get around all of the hardware and that sort of thing. So this is how it should look once your Decaville is fused on. So you can see, that it does all fuse on it just takes a little bit of working around i generally would not recommend having a join in your decaville um i think it can affect the way that it sort of sits but having said that i do have a tiny join up here on mine um i feel like that tiny bit there isn't going to make a difference so hopefully that'll be okay but that's the first time i've actually made a join in decaville um yeah so that should be it all done one other thing just to be aware of is that in the past, if I've had um, really cheap hardware, then sometimes when I put heat on it, it can cause the like finish to come off. So if you've got hardware that you've not, not used heat on before, maybe just check it before you start. Uh, but I've never had that problem with anything like Emmeline or any other sort of slightly more expensive hardware. It's just the really cheap stuff that I've had a problem with. So now we're done with that. Um, if you are using foam instead, just go ahead and baste it in and we'll move on to the next step. This next step is gonna require your two exterior side panels. You should already have your Decaville fused centrally on there. Or if you're using sew-in foam or something instead, then um, I would probably already base that on there at this point. And now you're gonna grab your strap tabs, your crossbody tabs from earlier. So the first thing you need to do is mark this. And what we're doing is we're mar marking it one and a half inches down. And hopefully you can see that I've already marked mine. I've marked it in the center and I've created a one inch wide line to, to guide me. So what we're gonna do is attach these and we're gonna make sure that this fold is on the line that you've drawn just like that so it's nice and central. So use some double-sided tape or some glue to hold this in place while you're sewing. And just make sure that that's nicely lined up. If you're not having a crossbody strap, then you can just skip this section and just move on to the next bit. Do the same thing with the second panel. So they're both ready like this. Now we're gonna sew around here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and then as close as we can get to this D-ring. So you'll notice that the way I do this is to use my hump jumper to prop up my presser foot. Some people prefer to use a zipper foot so they can get nice and close to that ring. So just whatever method works best for you. 
and then afterwards we'll fit a couple of rivets just to make it extra secure. Next, you can just add a couple of rivets if you want them. So you can just mark these where you think they look good. Um, I have this rivet template by Pierre, which I like to use um, just because it helps make sure that I get them nice and central. But you can just do that by hand. and then just punch through those holes. And fit your rivets. So you'll notice because of the Decaville in this crossbody tab, that it's really sort of thick and durable, which is a little bit harder to sew on, but being that crossbody straps have a lot of weight on them and they get used a lot, I just prefer to add some Decaville and I just think it will make it last a little bit longer. So I'll just do the same with the other exterior side and then we'll move on to the next bit. Now grab your main exterior piece and you can just choose whichever side you want, it won't make a difference, and one of your exterior sides. So what we're going to do is we're going to clip this on to the edge and just make sure that it's lined up at the top. Like that. Now it's kind of going to look like it's not lined up straight, but it's just because of the shape. So just make sure that the top of this corner is lined up with the top here. You need to sew through this with three eighths of an inch seam allowance. What you'll notice that I do is once I've done my first row of stitching, I'll do a second row of stitching right behind the first within the seam allowance. And that will just add strength to the seam and make sure um, that it stays nice and strong. I'm also going to make sure that I'm using stitches that match one of my fabrics. So if that seam is sort of under pressure, sometimes the seams can show just a tiny bit and if you've got a contrasting thread, it will be really noticeable. So I always make sure that it matches one of those fabrics. So we're just sewing between this little cutout here and the top. So you can see hopefully that I've done two lines of stitching. All I did was just move my needle over one position to do the second line of stitching. Now I'm going to grab the other exterior side and I'm going to clip that in place exactly the same as I did with the first. And again I'm going to sew this with 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and then I'm going to sew a second row of stitching inside the seam allowance just to the left of that. Now you can get an idea of how your bag's going to look. 
But before we attach to the other side, we need to make some small snips, which is going to make the base fit better. So just here where this cutout is, you just need to snip into your base up to your stitches. So this would be a lot easier if I had a sharp pair of scissors, but I seem to have lost mine down the back of my sewing desk. So hopefully you can see there that I'm just snipping up to where I've sewn. And I'm going to do the exact same thing on this side and just snip up to there again. So now I'm going to pull it across. So I'm simply pulling the other side of the exterior up and it's going to go right sides together. I'm going to clip it exactly the same as I did with the other side. So just make sure those corners match up at the top. And then clip it all the way down to the bottom. Now, when you get to the bottom, you're going to notice that it's not going to fit. So you're going to have to do the same thing and snip into the edge just there where it meets. So clip it as far down as you can get. And then you're just doing the exact same snip that you did on this side. So what we're going to do in a minute is match those up to sew the base. But first, we're just concentrating on this side. So grab your other side. We'll do them both while, while we're over at the sewing machine and just match that one up as well. And clip it right down to the bottom. So again, it's going to get a little bit awkward at the bottom. Just clip it as far down as you can. And then where this cutout is, you're going to cut in. So you're just cutting in by three eighths of an inch, which is where your stitches will be. And also where this cut out on the side piece goes to. A sharp pair of scissors would look wonders right now. There we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew this side with three eighths of an inch seam allowance and then another seam behind it, just like I did on the other side. And then I'm going to sew this side as well. That bit can feel a little bit awkward, um, but don't be afraid to just squash your bag into the shape that you need it to be whilst you're doing it. So what you should now have is both sides sewn in and we just need to finish with the base. So what we're gonna do is bring them to match each other. Now, what I should have mentioned before is that you want to mark your side panels at the top and bottom centers and the base panel, the exterior, we marked earlier anyway. And what you want to do is match up those centres and then just clip that into place.
and you should see that it fits just about perfectly they match up that's how it should be um i'm not going to lose any sleep if it doesn't because every now and then um if i've used i don't know a wrong seam allowance somewhere or i just I haven't quite sewn it perfectly or i haven't cut it out perfectly then it won't match up 100 percent but i'm not going to worry about it um but generally they should match up just right And so just clip this second side together as well. Now what we're going to do is sew through this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. And then we're going to do the second seam behind it again like we did with the sides. But what you'll notice is we're sewing from these cutout areas. So our seams are actually going to meet the side seams. And they're going to make like a perfect, um, not a perfect rectangle, but you know, perfect corners. So it's going to meet up with these seams just here. And make sure that you back stitch really well here and we're going to do both sides at the same time Okay, so that's your base sewn on and hopefully you should have your stitches just meeting there to make sure that you've got no gaps. So now you can turn your bag out and have a look at how it's... So I'm quite happy with how mine's looking and what I'm going to do now is fit the handles. So grab one of your handles from earlier and we're going to make a few different marks just to make sure that we get the rivets and everything in the right place. So I'm going to mark my handles and I'm going to mark them four inches up from the end on the wrong side. So hopefully you can see that. And then on the right side, I'm going to measure it five eighths of an inch. And one and an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to do that on both ends of my handle. So on my five eighths of an inch mark, I'm just going to punch through. And again, I'm going to punch through on my one and one eighths of an inch. So now when I put that through the top of the D ring, I bring it back to meet my four inch mark and I'm going to clip that into place. Now I'm just going to put my hole punch through the existing holes. And I'm going to fit my rivets. just make sure that your handle is nice and straight when you're doing this. Do you want those rivets to come through straight on the other side? And then set those rivets. Okay, so that's what your handle should look like. So when it's hanging down, it's going to have the strap end on show. And when it's hanging up, it's going to just look like a plain handle. 
Now, when you're bringing this second end around, you need to make sure that the handle isn't twisted. So just pop that through there, for instance. This is how you want your handle to look. If you were to go from that end, you'd end up with a handle that's sort of twisted and showing the strap ends on the wrong edges. So just make sure that it's nice and straight before you do it. Okay, so that's both of my handles fitted. So hopefully you can see that that's my four inch mark and that's where you're bringing it up to. Now, um, if you don't want to use rivets, that is fine. You can sew these into place instead. It's gonna be maybe a little bit more awkward, but um, yep, definitely doable and it will still look really good. So that's the exterior done. Now we're gonna move on to doing the zipper pocket for the lining. To start this section off, you're going to need a main lining panel and you're also going to need your zipper pocket facing. So I've already drawn the diagram onto this. Now, the easiest and quickest way, in my opinion, to do this is just to measure one inch in from each edge and draw a line until you end up with this box. Now, inside the box, all I've done is just a line that's vaguely down the centre and two triangles at the, at the end. So I'm going to measure one and a half inches down this panel and that's where I'm going to fit my zipper pocket facing. So my zipper pocket, fa pocket facing is going to go one and a half inches down and I need to make sure that it's centred. So I've pinned that into place and I've zoomed in a little bit so hopefully you can see it a little bit clearer. So what we're just going to do is sew around this rectangle here. I'm going to start midway along because I find that if I start in a corner I can end up with um, sort of like crinkling and creases in the corner and it's hard to get a nice look on my zipper pocket. So I'm going to start probably here um, and just make sure that you back stitch well as you're going around. So you probably notice that when I get to the corner, I just leave my needle in, lift up my press a foot, and then that allows me to pivot around the corner. Um, I use a shorter stitch length and a smaller needle because I'm working on the cotton lining. And that's pretty much it. Um, they're definitely right when they say that practice makes perfect because my zip pockets never used to be this neat. And just over time, they just seem to get better. So I think that's probably the trick to getting these straight. My lines used to be all over the place. So what you want to do is cut down this centre line. Ideally you want a small pair of scissors but I cannot find my sharp small scissors. And you want to go as close as you can to these corners but you do not want to clip your stitching. So that's important to getting a nice clean finish. Okay, so now that's done, I'm going to push this through to the back. And I'm just going to give it a press on the iron from both sides and that again makes a really big difference to the finish so just spend a bit of time sort of rolling out these seams and really pressing it with the iron because the more you press it the neater the finish. So this is how it should be looking when it's done. 
And if you've got really bad creases around these corners, then just don't underestimate the power of the iron. Um, I would just go back and try harder with the iron. I, I find that makes a massive difference for me. Um, and also just check that you have cut closely into those corners. Next, you need to grab your card pocket piece. Now, the first thing you want to do is mark the top, particularly if you've got a directional fabric, um, make sure that you mark the top so that it's you know facing upwards. And then there's measurements in the pattern for all of the card slots. So I've already measured mine into place. And what we're gonna do is start by folding the top right sides together on that first line. And I'm gonna press this with the iron. So when you're folding it on that line, just make sure that it's nice and straight down both sides. Now we want to flip it wrong sides together on the next line. So if you want to make this a little bit easier for yourself, you can draw the lines on both the wrong side and the right side of the fabric. Now again, just make sure it's straight down the sides. That means you've got a nice straight fold and press that. Flip it over and you need to fold it right sides together again on the next line. And then the next one is going to be wrong sides together and you can just see where we're going with this. And we're just going to keep doing this until we reach the bottom. So yeah, you can make this a little bit easier for yourself by drawing the lines on both sides. So that is your card slots. Now, if you're using a directional print, then the inside of the card slots, this bit just here is gonna be upside down, but honestly, it's gonna be sewn into place and no one is ever gonna be able to see that. So what I'm gonna do now is top stitch each of these folds. So you need to pull it away, top stitch, and then do it on all three folds. One thing I forgot to do um, before top stitching is just fold the bottom up. So I'm just going to fold it up by a quarter of an inch and give it a press. And this is just going to make it easier to sew the pocket closed later. So now that all three layers are top stitched, I'm going to Clip this together and baste it down both sides. So we're just going to baste it down each side with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and that's just going to hold all those pockets in place whilst we split the card slots. Now that those sides are basted into place, you've got some measurements on page 16. So just draw your lines on, um, ready to stitch for the card slots. 
You'll notice that the lines aren't even because when the zip pocket is open, the zip head will be on this side. So it's going to be blocking a bit of this pocket, which is why this side is slightly bigger than over here. So start measuring from the right, um, draw this line first, and then just work your way across. And that should be your pockets, uh, your card slots ready. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to top stitch these into place. I'm going to go from the bottom just up to the top of this card slot. I'm going to start from the bottom because if I start from the top, sometimes you can kind of dislodge the card slots as you go. And I'm going to use um, quite a long stitch length because it's kind of like top stitching and I want it to look neat. Okay, so make sure you backstitch really um, well at the top, just to give those card slots the reinforcement they need. And now I'm going to use my iron to remove my pen marks. So I love card slots, as you can probably tell, because there are only a few of my patterns. Um, I just think they don't take as long to make as you think, and it's really handy. So that's your card slots done. Now we need to turn it into a pocket. So grab your lining zipper and you're going to line it up on the top but you need to make sure the zip is closing on the left so mine's closing this way i need to have it going in that direction and i'll sew that into place with an eighth of an inch seam allowance So before you go any further, just make sure that your card pockets are pointing upward and that your zip is closing to the left. Now grab your other pocket piece and you're going to flip this over and place the zip on top and line it up with that top edge. So we'll sew through that again with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And you'll notice that what you've got now is that the right side of the zip is on the wrong side of the fabrics and the underneath of the zip is on the right side of the fabrics. So that way you know that you've got it right. And we're just gonna sew through that quickly with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Now that's sewn, get your iron back out. And to make this easier to fit the pocket, we're going to press it open here and make sure that these seams are nice and flat. If you've got a metal zip or zipper pull, just be careful because it's going to be really hot. Now we need to put this behind the main lining panel. So grab the lining panel that you prepared and make sure again that your zip is going left when it closes. What we're going to do is place it behind this box and sew it into place. But first of all, I'm going to use some double sided tape to hold it in place. So you can use glue if you prefer. Once you've got your double-sided tape off, um, you're going to want to make sure that your zipper pull is lying flat in the center. And then we need to put the main panel over. And this also needs to be centered.
And when you're sewing this into place, just make sure that this pocket piece stays up the whole time and that the other pocket piece is staying down. So that's really important because you don't want to sew through either of your pocket pieces other than just around this box. This is how it should look once you've got that sewn into place. So turn that over and pull this top piece down. And what we need to do is fold this bottom piece up to meet this one. So grab your iron. And just make sure it's all lying flat. And then we're gonna fold that up to me. And later when we're going to sew this closed after turning the bag, it will make it really easy to sew closed and to get a nice neat finish. So just clip these two pieces together down the sides. And now I'm going to pull this away and I'm going to just sew down both sides of this pocket just to close the sides up, but make sure that you leave the bottom open so we're not sewing the bottom closed. So that's your zipper pocket done. Make sure that you've backstitch really well on the bottom here because we're going to turn the bag through here later and you don't want it to split. So get your slip pocket all marked up as indicated on page 18 of the pattern and then what you're going to do with the first fold is fold it wrong sides together on that line. So I just fold it on my line and then I just make sure that my side is nice and straight this bit here, and then that will tell me that I've got a nice straight line. Okay, and then the second one, you're going to fold the right sides together, and again on the next line. Okay, so this is going to be the small slip pocket because what we've got is we're going to have a big slip pocket and a small one. Now, if you've got a directional fabric, um, you are going to notice, again, the inside of the slip pockets is going to be pointing down, but it's going to be sewn. It's not, it's not a big pocket, and I just think it's not going to be a problem at all. And it's a lot more um, work to separate it because you're going to have to have lot, four pieces of fabric instead of one. So for the purpose of this slip pocket, I've done it as just one piece. I just think it's going to be um, much quicker to make, much easier to make this way. So we're going to top stitch this small slip pocket before we go any further. So that's my small slip pocket top stitch. Make sure that you pull it away from the main piece when you're doing it. Now grab the top and fold that down to meet, meet the bottom of the small slip pocket. And you're gonna clip that together around these three open edges. Now that's clipped together, you wanna to mark yourself a nice big turning gap. So I'm gonna go for about five inches. And we're gonna sew down here and across until we get to this turning and just back stitch it there. And then again, we're going to go across here and up the other side. Now, 
before turning your pocket out, you, you can um, just trim down these corners here. So just make sure that you're not clipping your stitches. But this will just give it a slightly neat finish after we've turned it out. Now pull the pocket through. And then just make sure that you push out all of the edges. So to really get my corners out, I've got this um, little turning tool that I got off Amazon. So I'll link it in the video description. And I just gently push the corners out with that. You've got to be really careful because you don't want to damage your fabric, but it just helps to get a nice neat finish. Okay, once you've done that, get your iron back out and just give it a press around all the edges. Now on the bottom, we're gonna to need to fold it up where the turning gap is. So you just want to fold it to meet on both sides and we're going to sew that later when we sew the pocket on we'll sew the turning gap closed so before we fit the pocket we're just going to top stitch um, this larger slip pocket with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Once the top of that is top stitched, grab your main lining panel and we're going to place this two inches down from the top. Once you're happy that that's centered, just use a few pins to secure it into place. And now I'm going to sew, starting from here, I'm going to back stitch really well. I'm going to sew down the side across the bottom and sew and close that turning gap. And then back up here and back stitch well again up here. So make sure that where the pocket is going to be under the most stress is nice and secure. I've also just drawn a line up the centre of the pocket. And once I've sewn those three sides, I'm going to sew up here just very slightly to the side of the line and then one stitch across the top and then come back down the other side of the line. And that will divide my slip pocket into four separate pockets. Okay, so that's your slip pockets done. So hopefully you'll see now why I decided to use just one piece of fabric. So if you've got a directional fabric, if somebody looks inside the pocket, this bit will be upside down. Um, but you know, when that's in the bag and somebody's looking in from above, they are never going to notice that. And when they're putting their hand in to get something, they're not gonna see it. So I just felt that for the extra work that it was gonna create for you guys to make the pocket um, it just seemed pointless and I figured that it was much easier to do it this way. So that's our lining um, constructed. Now we just need to move on to the lining assembly and fitting the top zip. So we'll get started with the top zip. So make sure that you've figured out which way the zip closes and 
At the end that it's closing toward, you want to mark three quarters of an inch in on each edge, as you can see I've already done with my chalk pencil. And then you want to open this up and we're going to sort of pinch it on this fold, on this mark, sorry, and create a fold like that so that we've got a nice little angle and you can see that the mark is right there on the fold. So then we just need to stitch this in place. Now, most people will probably do this on a sewing machine, but I just can't seem to hold it in place while stitching. So I'm just gonna run a few stitches by hand. This does not need to be neat because it's not gonna be seen. You just wanna make sure it doesn't move. And now we need to do the same thing to the other side and make sure that it matches. So you might want to bring your zip a bit closer. And hopefully you can see there that if I fold it there, it's going to be a tiny bit too short. There we go, so that looks perfect. So now I'm just going to sew that side into place too. So you're literally just doing a couple of stitches to keep it in place. It doesn't need to be pretty. So now when I put it closed, you can see that it neatly matches up. Just make sure that your stitches um, are going to be in the seam allowance so they're not too close to the actual zipper tape. Next we're going to prepare the zip tail so you should just have your small zip tail and what I'm going to do is fold all four edges in by a quarter of an inch and press them. Once that's done, you're going to fold this over your zipper tape over the end. So you just want to make sure it's folded neatly in half. You can press that again if you want. And then place that over the end of the zip and clip it into place. If you've got any edges like this, just make sure you tuck them in. And we're going to take this over to the sewing machine and sew just the three open edges with about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. So just make sure that they match well on the sides so that when you're sewing through the top, you're going to be capturing the bottom at the same time. And this should be your finished zip tail. So a lot of people prefer to use hardware zip ends. So I'll also show you now how to fit one of these. So I didn't put a hardware end on the um, hardware supplies list because there's already quite a lot of hardware required for this pattern and it's fine to just do a fabric zip end. But I'm aware that a lot of people really like these so I thought I would just show you how to fit them. So the first thing I do is trim down my zip And then I just melt the end there to make sure it doesn't fray. Now I've got my hardware end right here. I just keep the screws in there so that I don't lose them. I'm going to put a bit of glue. I'm just using um, Fabri-Tac by Beacon. So I'm just going to put a little bit inside this. And then I'm going to fold the ends of the zip. It's 
so that I can fit those nicely in there. So I'm just going to fold, do a double fold on this one so there's no raw edges where I've cut it. And then you can just push that on like that. So hopefully you can see there how I've folded it underneath. And then you just need to screw it in. So that's the option with a hardware zip end. Now grab your two lining top pieces. Now if you look carefully you'll notice that they're not actually rectangles, they're shorter down here. And you need to measure two and a quarter inches in from the shorter side and just make a mark up the length of this piece. And do the same thing over here. So you've got two marks two and a quarter inches in. Now open up your zipper and you're going to place it so it's right sides together with the teeth at the top. And we're going to match up the turned teeth here. Actually, we'll just trim that off first just to make this slightly easier. And we're going to get the turned teeth to line up so that the teeth are right on the two and a quarter inch mark. and just clip that into place. Now we're gonna clip the rest of this into place until we get to the other mark. So once you meet, meet this other mark, or you're close to it, you're going to turn it so that you've got an angle here. And what you want is for this side of the tape to line up with the line you've got. So hopefully you can just see my line here is lining up perfectly with this angle. So the teeth are going to be on the right hand side and we'll just clip that into place up here and down here. So hopefully you can see there that I've got this angle. It's coming along straight along here until we get to my line just here and the tape is now going upwards up out of the pattern piece. So once you've got that into place you just want to baste across here with a scant quarter inch seam allowance. So that's a little bit less than a quarter inch. Um, you want to make sure that you catch this fold here nicely. So hopefully you can see quite clearly there my stitching and you can see where it's folded on that line. So the next thing that you want to do is grab your lining panel that has the zipper pocket. And what we're going to do is clip these right sides together. So you want to make sure that your zip is hanging down like this into the bag. And we're just going to clip these together at the top. So you can see the part that we've clipped is the part with the zip. So the zip is nicely sandwiched between those two layers. And now I'm going to sew this through with a quarter inch seam allowance from edge to edge all the way through. Just make sure that your zip is still hanging down because when we sew through this we're going to um, reinforce that curve that we put in. So now you've sewn that into place you just want to push this up but you're only pushing up this top piece. You do not want to push up the zip. And make sure that this is now unclipped and hang, hanging down into the bag. And we're going to top stitch through this top piece with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And we're going to capture all the seams behind it.
that's what it's going to look like when it's top stitched. So just make sure you've got this nice, neat little um, curve here where it's sort of dropping down into the bag at the end. Now we're going to fit the other top lining piece. So just turn this upside down. And you want to place this one so that the shorter end is what you're looking at. You should already have your two and a quarter inch marks. Now, if you do up your zip, then you can make sure that you don't make any mistakes. What we want is we want this piece here of the zip to be lined up with this bottom piece. So now I know my zip is nice and straight. I'm just going to pull that down and place it onto that piece. And that's where it's going to sit. But I need to make sure that it's lined up. I'm also just going to trim this bit off. So I need to make sure it's lined up with my line, the same as I did on the other side, with my two and a quarter inch line. And just clip that into place. Now clip it along the length until you get to the other mark. Okay, so my mark is just here. And again, I'm gonna turn this so that it's at an angle and so that the edge that doesn't have the zip teeth on is lined up perfectly with that line. So my line is just here. So I'm just gonna clip that in place at the top. And then I'll clip this at the bottom as well. Okay, so once you're happy with that, we're gonna sew this again with a scant quarter inch seam allowance just to hold that zip into place. Now that's basted into place, I like to just um, do up my zip just to reassure myself that I've definitely fitted it correctly. So there you go. Then you know that it's um, correct and also it's matching up quite nicely on the ends. So it's all tying in okay. So I'm gonna undo that and I will just clip this end back into place because I want to make sure it's hanging down into my bag and that I don't mess it up when I'm sewing it onto the lining. So grab your other lining piece, the one with the slip pocket, and we need to place this right sides together with it. So just make sure there's no twists in your zip and we're lining up the zip edge with the top of this lining panel. So just clip that into place. So make sure that your zip is looking like this. And now I'm gonna sew through this with a quarter inch seam allowance um, across the whole length. And again, make sure that it's hanging down into the bag here so that when you sew over this angle just here, that you're gonna get like a nice neat finish. So just like you did before, push this up now that it's sewn and you're just pushing up the top piece. You want the zip to be facing down into the bag. And you might want to iron this. Okay, so we're gonna top stitch through here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance and make sure that your zip is hanging down into the bag like this when you're doing it. Right, now we need to attach the linings to each other. So the first thing I would do is um, just do up the zip at the top. 
and I would tuck your zip tail into one of the slip pockets or something just because you don't want to sew through it later by accident. It's just nice to have it out of the way. And now we're going to clip the lining together. So what we want to do is just match up the sides and the bottom and clip them together. Once that's all sewn together, um, I would take this over to the ironing board and press all the seams open. This is much easier to do on an ironing board um, than my pressing mat, so I won't show you it on camera, but I'm just gonna press all the seams open. It's gonna make the lining fit nice and neat. I should also have mentioned that when you're sewing, sewing the lining, you have to use a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. I know a lot of people increase it so that the lining fits better on certain patterns, but my patterns are designed with a lining that's purposefully smaller and it will fit perfectly so long as you use the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance. So if you increase it, your lining is actually going to end up being too small. So now I've pressed all my seams open, I'm going to pull my box corners together and sew them together. So what you should be able to do is just match up this side seam with the base seam and clip that together. And then the rest of the box corner should sort of fall into place. And you just want to clip that all the way across. I also like to add a couple of clips down the side. I just find that helps it sit better when I'm sewing it. So what we're going to do is sew across this with 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. But first of all, I will join the other box corner as well. So that's your box corners both sewn and now your lining is complete. So I'm just going to show you one last thing that I love to do ever since I saw um, Nicole from Sonar do it on one of her videos. So this is just to get like a really neat lining. Um, she just grabs it where the box corners are and creates like a fold. So just make sure it's going from one corner to the other and then she just presses it. So I do this on all my bags now because it just gives it a really nice finish on the inside. So once this is sat inside, you can see now you've got like nice crisp edges. So it's going to kind of sit nice and neat inside the exterior. So now that your lining is complete, we can move on to the final assembly. So grab your exterior and what we need to do first of all is turn both of these the opposite way around. So you want your lining to be right sides out. And you need your exterior to be right sides in. Now one thing you'll notice with me is that I don't um, trim my seam allowances. I find that I prefer to like press them open and things like that. 
and I never seem to have a problem with with that but if you want to trim your seam allowances down go ahead and do it but if you want to sew the base of your lining in then don't trim the seams on your box corners just leave those until later once your exterior is right sides in just tuck your handles in and make sure that your d-rings are pointing down as well and then what we're going to do is we're going to put the lining into the exterior so if you've got a front because you've got like a handmade label or something or, or a logo label on it then um, you need to decide whether you want your zip pocket to be on the front or the back and then you can match it up accordingly for me i haven't got anything to distinguish which side is front and back on the exterior so i'm just going to shove mine in now this is where it's handy if you mark the centers of these side exterior sides because what we're going to do is match up this seam from the lining to this mark here so i'm just going to clip that into place and then go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. Now what I'm gonna do is clip these seams open. So the exterior seams. And I'll do the same thing on this side. Next, you're just gonna clip the rest of the lining and the exterior together around the sides. So just make sure that you're pulling them together nice and tight and clip them along the whole length. Okay, so that's all clipped in at the top. Now I'm gonna sew around the top. Um, I should have said, if you're worried about it, make sure that your zipper pocket is open because we're gonna turn through that later. Personally, I just um, reach through the lining and open it after I've sewn it, so I'm not too worried about that. But we're gonna sew this with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance around the whole of the top. And then I'm going to do a second row of stitching within the seam allowance. Um, just like I did with the rest of the exterior, just to make sure the seams are nice and strong. So that is the bag sewn together at the top. Just make sure that when you're sewing that your seams stay open. That's really important because otherwise your top stitching will be harder. Um, and you might prefer to use a zipper foot because as you're going past the handles here where the rings are, it's quite tight with the normal presser foot. So I just move my needle across so it's not a problem. But if you don't have that option, a zipper foot would be great. So just pull your lining out and if like me you haven't undone your zip then probably best to do that now so i just find my zip head can't remember where it is there it is and i just grab it through this lining and undo it so if you don't want to sign uh if you don't want to sew your lining in you can just turn it right side out now but if you want to get like a really really neat finish on your lining then you can try this method so I don't always do this because sometimes I feel like it kind of pulls the side seams in a little bit, but on this bag, it doesn't look like that at all. And I really like the finish. So what we're going to do is try and get the base of the exterior to touch the base of the lining. So it's going to be a little bit awkward and you want to do this so that your pocket, you can still access it. So we're going to basically grab the corners and clip them together. Now you'll notice that the lining is actually slightly smaller than the 
um, exterior, which it should be. So even better is if you've marked your, ah, I did mark mine, you've marked your centers on your exterior, then you can clip that together at the center and then you know that it's gonna be centered once it's sewn in. So that's what it's gonna look like. I'll just put a couple of extra clips on to make sure it doesn't come off. Because you can see it's kind of under strain. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I'm going to match it so that the seam of the lining is touching the base of the exterior. But we'll match up those centers first. Okay, so you can kind of see it looks like a bit of a mess, um, but what we're going to do is take it over to the sewing machine and just sew through the seam allowance. So this is the seam allowance of the exterior and this is the lining. We're going to sew those seam allowances together and I'm going to do that on both sides. Now you'll notice when I'm doing it on the machine that it is a bit awkward and it's not going to be for everyone, um, but I'll show you the lining when it's finished and you'll see how neatly it, it fits in and then it's sewn in so it just stays in place. So there it is once it's done. Um, I've got to be honest, I really don't enjoy doing that, which is why I haven't done it on any of my recent patterns. I did it on my earlier ones, but it's just not enjoyable to do. So now that's done, I'm going to turn the bag right side out through this pocket, which is going to be harder because of sewing the base in, um, but it is absolutely possible. So what I would do first of all is find the exterior and then start by pulling the exterior out. Okay, so hopefully you can see um, what that's done inside is it's pulled that in so that it's sewn into place and that just makes sure that the lining fits really neatly. You can also see where we pressed it, that it's sitting nice and neat on that section as well. So I'm gonna give this a really good press with the iron. I'm gonna roll the seams out at the top and then I'm gonna clip them around the whole of the top ready for top stitching. So this is what your bag should now look like and it's all clipped on the top ready for top stitching. So I'm going to crank up my tension to the highest for the top bit. I have to do that for my top stitching and a really nice long stitch length and a size 90 Microtex needle. And I find that those things combined help me to make sure that I get a nice neat top stitch. Also because the seams are offset from each other, um, I find that I'm not going to have to use my hump jumper. I can just carry on right through here. So let's do that.
So that's your bag top stitched. And now you've got the last thing to do, which is to pull out your zipper pocket and sew that closed. So first of all, just clip it along the length. Now you just need to sew through the bottom of the pocket here with an eighth of an inch seam allowance. Shove that pocket back in there and make sure it's as neat as can be. And now we'll have a look at the finished bag. Okay, so that's our finished bag. I think it looks pretty cool. I'm loving this um, fabric. This is by a designer called um, Holly Zollinger, I think she's called, um, from Spoonflow. So you can see kind of how neatly the lining is fitted. And because it's sewn in, it will like stay no matter what. Um, so that's quite quite nice. I think, but it is a bit of extra hassle as you saw. So it's totally up to you whether you want to do that. Um, when, when it's closed at the top, let me show you what that looks like. It's got like a really nice neat finish. And yeah, it's got a nice sort of slouchy feel to it. So just to show you as a comparison, the one that I made that doesn't have pockets, um, this one's got, the lining hasn't been sewn in. So you can see that it's still really neat. It's still nice and tightly fitted, but you know, it can come out. You can pull it out if you want to, but it is designed as with all my linings to be a really snug fit. So it's not going to be sort of baggy and hanging around. So it's up to you whether you think it's worth the extra effort to sew it in or not. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Hope you like the bag. If you've got any questions, just leave a comment and um, subscribe if you want to be notified when my next patterns are coming out.